Welcome back to Gin Reviews from South Florida. So, tonight, uh, I kind of did a little thing um, around Christmas about this gin that we're going to be sampling tonight. Um, honestly, I did not want to do this review. Um, I'll tell you in a moment why. But we are here. This gin is distilled in Miami. It's 44%. And the name is Mia Sophia Gin. Review tonight on Gin Reviews from South Florida. Gin Joe! Um, now, I remember purchasing the gin, okay? Uh, I remember actually the store I went to to purchase this gin. When I got home, I uh, did a you know quick search like I usually do, and I could not find one thing on this. Uh, and that's where I left that first video, and I was telling everyone that you know I can't find anything on this. Maybe someone out there knows something, but to no avail. No one came forward or said anything. Um, so, after that happened, I went back to the liquor store that I purchased it from, and I actually brought the bottle back in, and I see, I don't remember who I bought it from. I'm usually good with faces and stuff like that, but I, I told the guy, I'm like, hey, you sold me this bottle, and I have, there's no info on it. Is it someone's, like, a, like a, a personal, someone here in the store's bottle? And the guy looked at me, and he said, I've never seen that bottle before in my life. So, I said, are you serious? And I showed him, you know, the transaction that I had. And he said, oh, well, that doesn't say that you bought it. And I go, I understand, sir. But why would I lie about this? And I even asked, I said, where's the owner of the place? I am the owner. Oh, okay. So, I will not be going back to that liquor store ever again. Um, but then I had a problem. Because he wouldn't buy it back from me. And the retail price was 25 and change, which wasn't too bad, you know. Um, it's a local gin, at least it says it is, distilled in Miami. But I thought to myself, well, if I'm not going to get another, uh, at least an exchange for this, which you wouldn't do, I might as well do a review on it, even though it might be the only bottle in the world. Now, I'm going to tell you what I do know about it, because there is some information on this bottle but it's again it's very very strange a lot of it okay um first it does say it's distilled from cane up here see it but if you look at the sticker right here it says a rhyming word distilled from green so what is it um <clears throat> technically sugar cane is classified as a grain uh i have a botanist friend that I asked that question to and she was like yeah no it's classified that way still though that's very confusing I guess it was for me yesterday um, but to clear that up it is the same thing is it sugar grain or is it grain cane like what, what the hell does that mean it says it's at 44% I really don't know what to believe on this bottle um, here Look at it. There's nothing, there's no markers, there's nothing else other than this label that does not pull any results at all from any site, from anywhere that I usually do my reviews or my information for gins. There's even a really cool establishment in Miami. Um, I thought maybe it had something to do with that. It's a, it's a restaurant and their main focus is gin, which is oh, amazing. Um, it's definitely on the pricier end, and uh, until their executive chef quits, I'm not going to be working there, but I would jump at that in a heartbeat. Um, I thought maybe it had something to do with that place, but no, it didn't. So unfortunately, for the first time on, uh, on the program here, I do not have a botanical list to give you guys. I have nothing other than me popping this open and, and doing it Jinjo justice, so... I'm a little hesitant about doing this review, right? First, I hate 
doing a review where I know that no one else, or I think no one else may be able to get this product. Then again, I do do a lot of personal reviews on my channel, like all the Castle and Keys, you know, um, the personal bottles I bought from Elixir Spirits, uh, you know, those are, those you can only get from there, and, and those are kind of my, for me, you know, and they're my lower viewed, <laughs> um, you know, what are they called, videos, that's the word. Premium quality, exclusive selection, Mia Sophia, spelled M H. Y A regular Sophia gin and then it says Clark's heritage London tradition now Clark's heritage you would think would be the distiller right like they would be the, but there is no Clark's heritage <laughs> all right let's open this bastard up because at the end of the day if it's gin I'm gonna drink it right um I do need a a knife though Hold on. All right, we gotta put a knife away. It's bad luck. Angie, where are you, girl? Nah. She's been she's been in and out all day. Oh, you know what? Now I could actually like really look at this. I thought maybe it would say something else. It says Alchemist Distilleries. I did look that up too. I did see that actually. It's like right on the side of the label. Artisan spirit, hmm. handcrafted in Miami. From what grain, cane? I don't know. Let's pop it. Oh, I don't know how to feel about that. So, in closer inspection, it's just a piece of wood, pine, painted cheaply with a. Uh, one of these weird stoppers. I always, I, these always get me. Like, look, are those dimples like supposed to be there to make it look like cork? Cause I hate that. I really hate that. If that's the reason the dimples are there to make it look like cork, then they can go to hell. Here's a, uh, that was the thing on it. So do what it, do what you can out there. I'm sure I could tell you grain or cane right now from the legging here. Sugar cane. See how how nice and silky it is? See? If it was grain, if it was corn legging, you know, we would see our corn legging, but it's not. So it's definitely sugar. There's a really harsh ethanol. I mean, all right. There are botanicals in here. I mean, I can smell them for sure, but the ethanol tug that's coming off of this is it's harsh. Hmm. Okay, well, I mean, I'm kind of moving past that, and I do detect juniper and citrus. Now, other than those two things, I'm really not 100% until I down this and see what we think after that more proof of uh, of a uh, cane right there you could see those the legs you know, cause corn legging uh, as we know it usually blotches like in bigger blobs up here and then goes down but when it's sugar cane like that you see how silky so ooh, huh It's a good burn, but it's this is so hard. I mean, I'm, I got a lot of things going on right here in the head right now with this. Give me one second, like I do. I need a little bit more. Do a little more. Uh, yeah, that annoying noise. I know. Mm.
I know what it is. Okay. It's Stretton's. It tastes exactly like Stretton's. Stretton's also was, or is, a, um, a cane. A cane-based gin. But in Stretton's, the cane tasted burnt. This doesn't taste burnt, but there's a high enough ethanol distraction. Let's just call it that. But botanical-wise, the juniper is definitely there, okay? I mean, the alcohol, it does taste a little stronger than what it says, I gotta be honest. But it could also be from the cane, because cane, uh, sugar cane-based gins, they usually um, have more sugar, obviously, and they hit you, you know, up in the brain a little bit differently. Uh, they, they get you a little bit more plastered. Let's put it in layman's terms. All right, so juniper, I'm definitely, I'm still tasting it, and I like it. I like the juniper. No. Um, if I had a guess at citrus, I would say either lemon or orange peel are in there. I do taste a little bit of, like, coriander, something along those lines. But after that, I really, it's really hard to, uh, to get anything decent out of this, uh, you know, uh, for sure, for real thing, and uh, I'm gonna do a martini with it because it, it it's a gin more suited for a martini. Martini, I haven't even had one yet. Then a uh, gin and tonic. Come on, we're gonna move on to our martini right now. First, I'm gonna add in the vermouth and the uh, olive brine, and we'll get some pop and ice tonight. Okay, we're gonna go uh, two ounces right on the line of our Mia Sophia. You know those bottles of like, um, what's the, oh yeah, I think it's like Hendrix does it. It's so stupid and gimmicky. Like you, you get someone's name, like a friggin' Coke, you know, like a pack of some of those Coke bottles they put your name on, like enjoy the Coke with Joe. It's like, what a gimmick that is. And then people go out and they buy a bottle of gin for like 50 bucks with their you know, boyfriend's name on the bottle? Are you serious? I don't know. I just would never, I would never appreciate that as a gift. I would always think of it as, like, what a marketing gimmick that is, in my eyes, anyway. All right. We're going to stir this up. But that's what I was saying about this gin. I was thinking that. I mean, it almost looks like a Hendrix design on the bottle itself. Um... Let's just, let's hope this martini kind of re redeems everything else I just went through. I'm really hoping it does, because there is, there are a few notes on this gin, and the proof is pretty high. I mean, it's not terribly high, but it's high. Well, again, I would never pour someone else's drink like this, but since it's just me and Angela, which I haven't seen her in the last couple of minutes, and she doesn't drink, so I figure I can. Well, there it is. Salud. Wish me luck. Mmm. It's tasting more like a, like a gin martini right now, which is very good. Um, so, the brine and the bitters, especially the bitters, the orange bitters are bringing out more citrus, and I'm definitely tasting an orange note, so I'm going to say there's orange in there instead of lemon. Mm. The vermouth, it's not overpowering, but it's just right there at the cusp of being entwined with this product. Um... Well, I mean, there's really not too much else I can say about this gin, since I don't have that much information about it. So I'm going to leave this right now up to fate and YouTube and the world, um, that someone sees this bottle and they see this ridiculous name and everything, and they claim ownership to this, because I'd like to, to know the story about it. Even if it is a gimmick or something, like whoever this person is or whatever, I want to know why they got a gin and why I am the sucker that bought it. 
Maybe that's the real question. Anyway, from me to you, uh, to you to me, to everyone here in the U.S. in the middle, from sea to shining sea, thank you so much for coming back and having another cocktail with the old Gin Joe in the uh, brand new year of 2022. Let's hope that this review is the beautiful start of some big changes on the horizon. Cheers. Salute. Take care. You bastard. I'll see you again. Ciao. Thank you so much. Please subscribe, comment, and thumbs up. And as always, the Jinjo will be coming out with new reviews. New and better reviews every other day.